All right, guys, so uh, welcome back. This is day two of the uh, Martini uh, load workup. Um, I did, didn't really give you a close-up view of the uh, the grouping from yesterday, but you guys saw it on the video. Um, we had one, two, three, four, and this is kind of an oblong shape, so I think it might be five, but I'm just going to call it a four-shot group. Uh, this one was at the top of the plate. plate's about eight, nine inches. So we ended up putting a group that was about 13 inches high from my aiming point, which was down here. I was using a full sight at 100 yards, so we're about 13 inches high. And uh, the total group size, about 10 and a half inches. Now granted I shot three um, uh, prone, one standing, and one kneeling. But the three prone, I believe, were this one, this one, and this one, or maybe this one, this one, and this one. But either way, the widest spread out here, this was one of the prone ones, so it, it definitely threw it. And uh, I loaded up some uh, some more ammo today. I'm only, only going to be shooting three shot groups just because I have limited brass. Um, but I'll go through all the rounds as we shoot them. Uh, hopefully I'll get some good chrono readings and uh, get you guys some data to see if it'll help you out too. So let's go ahead and hit the range. All right, so first up, we've got the 85 grain seated at uh, 3.25 inches. It's pretty much as long as I can get it. It still make it fairly easy to uh, put in the chamber. Alright, I'm going to shoot the lower target and hopefully we'll get some chrono readings. Chrono is set up at 5 yards. And I'm going to use a fine sight 6 o'clock hold. chamber. We got some crud in there. I did wipe the oil out and we got a reading of uh, 1202. There we go. I think that's what it was. Some crud. Eleven eighty-seven. Yeah, it was like some orange, orange crud. I don't know where that came from. All right, last one. It's getting tight though. Yeah. or something built up in here. All right. You can see the end of the end of the bullet's pretty dirty. Let's see if it'll go. There we go. One more shot. look pretty good. Somehow I'm bleeding. Yeah, I pinched my nail. Alright, so I ran a patch through and uh, of course you're going to get fouling out of the barrel, but 
I got some pretty large chunks that were coming out of the uh, chamber area and uh, I saw that that stuff was also getting uh, pushed into the, uh, the front of the bullet when I was trying to seat them in there. So my guess is uh, 3.25 might be a little too long. So uh, our next one's going to be uh, 3.2. Um, the group down there actually looks really good. I'm impressed. I got the binos out and uh, all hit the plate. I was fine sighting it uh, right at the 6 o'clock of the plate. Everything uh, it pretty much hit right where I was aiming, just slightly right. Uh, so pretty impressed overall. Uh, I'm going to shoot the next ones at the uh, upper target and uh, we'll see where they go. Hopefully that uh, slightly shorter distance will keep us out of the, the fouling that's created and um, uh, these are a little going to be a little easier to put in. So on a clean chamber uh, 0.25 was, was easy to put in but after that first shot it was pretty hard. Um, wouldn't want to do that normally so we'll see what happens. Let's see how this goes. We'll shoot the top target. All right, that one's that one's seated in there real easy. All right, fine sight, six o'clock, top target. a little tight but not bad I'm gonna try this crossover thumb grip I think that might be what got my thumb Three point two. See what happens. All right. This last one was a little. It just scraped the back edge. Oh. All right. I didn't get the first reading. The second reading is one one seven three. Let this cool down and uh, go down range. So the next few that we have uh, are all 3.15 seating depth. It's only showing one groove, uh, one grease groove up. Uh, the 3.08 that I picked yesterday, uh, that was to the top of this groove. And that's kind of what I'm used to, you know, you seat it to the can lure and stuff like that. Uh, I'm kind of new to this black powder stuff, but um, I seated it, I think, a little too far in, and that's why we got the big wild group. Uh, as you see, seating it out further definitely improved the grouping. Um, now let's see. Now let's see what powder does to the group. So this will be the last one uh, testing bullet length at 85, and then we're going to start testing. Um, powder. So we're going to do 85 and then the other end of the spectrum 70 and then I went and shot right in the middle at a 77.5. So um, and that's just because I had limited cases. I would have liked to have done a better spread but um, I just have limited cases right now and uh, I don't want to make 10 trips just to get this thing done. So all right so let's see what we can do with uh, a 3.15, 85 grain. Oh, I know you guys can't see it, but uh, my 
chronograph is completely covered in uh, grease cookie. So it's got it's got bullet groove grease and uh, grease cookie all over it. So that one's seated well. We're gonna do fine sight bottom target. Everything's looking good on the brass. And uh, these ones are seating pretty darn easy. Oh, I forgot the reading again. All right, that last one was 1149. I'll, I'll put them up on the video. Still looks good. And that one was eleven sixty seven. All right, so I'll give it a few seconds to cool off and then we'll go ahead and shoot the seventy seven point five grain. So now we're going to do so it's the same. Seating depth 3.15, uh, but this time we've got 77.5 grains of black powder. So we're going to see how lowering the charge slightly uh, changes the uh, point of impact. Everything else is the same. So uh, the way I loaded these was exactly how uh, Rob over at British uh, Muzzle Loaders uh, says to load them up. As you can see, or maybe you can't, it uh, is fitting nice and flush in there, so it likes that 3.15 even with the fouling. And after shooting a few rounds of this, I think I'd appreciate a lower charge anyway. So, uh, fine sight, top target. You guys should have seen that one. Uh, the hill behind that target is very loose dirt and uh, it kind of avalanched on us. It was pretty funny. All right, that one looks good. Cartridge looks good. Uh, felt recoil, I gotta say, I don't know if it's in my mind or not, but uh, it, it didn't feel as heavy. Getting good primer strikes, looks all good. Yeah, that one, that one needed a little extra push. Oh, and I for you know, I, I think I always forget the first round. Anyway, uh, this one was 1139, so we lost what about 40 feet per second off the uh off the 85 grain. I'll average it up and when I get all the data I want to check it out. All right one last shot we'll go down to change targets.
All right, that one looks like 1093. Last trio of rounds. We've got a uh, sitting depth 3.15 and uh, 70 grains of 2F black powder. And uh, they, that 3.15 is about perfect seating depth. It's not, it's not messing up with the fouling or anything. So, all right, so we're gonna find sight it again at six o'clock. These glasses, glasses are getting a little smudged up. All right. One zero three one. One zero four nine. like 1054 so those are really consistent so let's go down take a look at the target and then uh, head home because it's getting kind of cool out all right so we're back at home and uh, let's go over the the targets first let me explain how I was uh, shooting today so I shot everything at a six o'clock hold. So six o'clock hold means I'm sh aiming at the bottom of this target. So I made sure I had a nice contra contrasting color against the background with the white, and I'm aiming down here. Center hold is here. Uh, I noticed that uh, it, this thing just shoots too high to, to pull off a center hold. So I did six o'clock all day. Uh, the other thing I noticed was when I was aiming full sight like this looks, sight it's gonna shoot right over that target uh, it shoots about a foot high uh, it's not usable the another way you can do it is you can shoot half sight well half sight was too high too so what I had to do today was shoot fine sight so this is how my sight picture was every time I was shooting now let's take a look at the targets so um 3.25 why did i pick 3.25 well i tested out the rounds as i was making them and that was the longest i could make them and make them still chamber uh, i started i think at 3.35 or 3.4 or something like that and i just kept going in until i could get it to chamber uh, what i noticed on the range was at 3.25 as soon as there's fouling in the barrel the uh, bullet pushes into that fouling and really has a hard time uh, chambering. Um, the research I've done, three point, well, as long as you could get it seated out, the better it's going to shoot. Uh, and we can see that that is possible. So I'm going to have to do some tests on um, fouling management. Uh, I know folks use blow tubes, other folks use uh, that utterly smooth. Um, I'm going to test it out and see if I can keep shooting these groups, dealing with the, the fouling. So next, we brought it in 0 0.05, so now we're 3.2. Opened it up twice as big, seven and a half inches, so bam, down here, bam, one and a eighth off the page, and then uh, right here, it was almost touching. Uh, group still favoring to the right, but opened up twice as big, just moving it out that little bit. 
Now we went to 3.15. Reason why I picked 3.15 because uh, the pictures and stuff I saw of original rounds, uh, they list 3.15 as the overall length. So uh, we shot a five and five eighths inch group here, here, and then one inch off the plate right about here. So still, we're favoring to the right. Um, but I believe this was the second best group of the day. So uh, elevation was good. Looked like we just had some horizontal stringing. So now we changed it up. We, I started uh, looking at uh, powder loads to see if we could tighten the group up with different powder loads. So I chose my max, which was 85. And I chose my minimum, which was 70. And right in the middle is 77.5. So we did the standard length, 315. And then we shot all on the plate with the 77.5. And then lastly, uh, our lowest charge of the day, seven and a half inches. And we shot here, here, and then four inches. I was surprised by that one. It really threw away off the paper. Um, really, I, I, I said something in, on the video about um, managing recoil. I, I gotta say that I didn't notice any difference between 70 and 85 grains of black powder. I really didn't notice a whole lot of difference in uh, recoil. So if you're looking at saving your shoulder, don't fire a Martini Henry, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Um, or don't fire it prone. I think uh, firing it standing is a, is a lot easier. But um, at from 85 to 70, really didn't see any change. All right, so you may wonder why why I'm trying to get any accuracy out of, out of this rifle. Uh, it is a blast to shoot, uh, regardless of um, where it shoots. Um, but I was gearing up for um, the Rifle Chair YouTube channel's uh, Cabin Fever Challenge. And I've never shot in the uh, single loading rifle category. And now that I got the Martini up and running and I, I can produce ammo for it, I wanted to give it a shot. So accuracy and speed um, are, are uh, important in that challenge. So I have to go with the 3.15 length regardless of uh, the group size uh, because I can't do any fouling management because it has to be one round after another after another after another uh, I can't do any type of fouling management in between so we're stuck with that length so we're kind of stuck with the six to seven and a half inch group regardless um, but what I noticed with the 77.5 was when I aimed here it just shot a little high uh, the windage problem of every other round shooting right looked like it was repaired so I think I'm gonna go with the 77.5 and uh, if you guys want to see how that ended up go ahead and check out the cabin fever challenge uh, 2020 video and uh, I'm gonna shoot 20 of these rounds probably in around three minutes or so and um, I'm gonna shoot them standing kneeling prone and sitting so if you want to see where the impacts are and you want to see how this round performs, go ahead and check that other video out. I don't have a fancy spreadsheet or anything, but boom, this is it. Uh, this was the initial rounds that I put together. The reason why it was 3.08 is because if you seat it to the last grease groove, make that disappear, that is where that ends up. And me firing cast loads and whatever else with uh, other weapons that's where I thought it needed to be evidently that jump to the lands and grooves creates a terrible group and I think if we use some math you can almost see a trend there except for this guy I don't know what happened there but uh, you can almost see a trend there uh, best group size out of each category you went from good to definitely me so uh, let's see we kind of all covered all this stuff this is how high uh, it was hitting above the point of aim 
Um, the only time I used full sight was with this top on the rest of them. I was using a fine sight right there. So let's take a look at velocity. So uh, this is original martini round is uh, 1250 feet per second. We got pretty close to that with the full load and the uh, long round. But as you see, the averages 1185, 1190, and 1164. Changes in depth didn't really change the uh, velocity a lot. Where the velocity did change was when we started changing um, powder weight, which logically that's going to happen. So we're at 1164, 1121, and 1044. So um, almost, what, 120? Yeah, 120 foot per second change. Uh, let's see, everything was pretty consistent between the rounds. Usually about 30 foot per second to 50 foot per second uh, deviation. So, anyway, uh, this was the round that I was using. It's an RCBS uh, mold, and it's uh, 0.469. I am kind of curious if I use a larger round if I'm going to get better accuracy. That's so it's something I will visit further. Thanks for making it this far in the video. Uh, myself and the Martini I had a have a lot of fun uh, putting this one together, and uh, uh, hopefully the information was useful or at least entertaining. So, um, if you guys got any comments or suggestions, uh, please put them below and. Uh, We'll see you guys next time.